my puppet career started when I was about 13 or 14, I think. Um, my mother actually started it off after the last uh, war. She was an artist and she was looking for something new to do. I was uh, old enough to help then. The sort of puppets they were were called marionettes on, on strings. Uh, and we had a, a little stage as well. And we did little stories and various acts. We had a circus. Then, of course, I left school uh, and went to art school. Uh, and we, we still did a few shows now and again. Um, but uh, obviously I, I didn't have so much time. At art school I did sculpture, which uh, was obviously a helper later on. When I'd done the course there, I didn't know what else to do, so I did a teaching course and taught for a couple of years, which I didn't really want to do. I, I liked making things. A friend puppeteer who worked on uh, a series called Twizzle, and then they were coming up with a new series called Torchy the Battery Boy, and they needed more puppeteers. And they asked, she asked me to go along and have an interview there, and I got the job. The last series that I did at that studio was, was Secret Service, and um, that was the finish of doing the puppet films for TV because that company went on to do live action series instead of the, the puppets. We mustn't underestimate them. They're a devious bunch. So I was out of work. A, a, a director of the company called John Reed had also left the company and we formed a partnership to try and get more work. ATV, uh, who, who had um, made the other uh, series that we've worked on before, got the franchise for doing Rupert Bear. So they asked us to go and see them and, and uh, discuss doing the series. That was in 1970, which was exactly 50 years after it had actually been invented, the Rupert Bear books, I think they were first. The company asked us to make a short bit of film to see if we were suitable to do it. <laughs> Having worked on the Thunderbirds and all those, uh, we still had to go through this. I've already tried. They decided we were suitable to, to film it. All right, Mummy. Bye. As far as the stories were concerned, they were based, at first anyway, on, on the annuals uh, and adapted to, to suitable for, for puppets. I think probably towards the end they, they were more made up because, uh, well, the writers probably ran out of, of uh, stories. You seem very friendly. What are you doing besides dancing a jig and telling everybody how good you are? I'm not doing anything at all. I'm just feeling lonely and trying to cheer myself up. Well, come with me to Nutwood. I'm going shopping for Mummy. I'd worked with uh, Judy Bennett on some children's stuff at the BBC, where she'd done a, a, a young boy's voice, actually, she, she was doing. And uh, I suggested her, and she was the one who, who was taken on to do it. Hello, Robert. Hello, Raggedy. Where have you been, Tom? We've just come from the high street, says Rupert, and he tells Pong Ping about Great Grandfather Dragon. So you see, we want to know what to give him. Oh yes, I can help. We can give him a big helping of same food as George eats. Rupert, of course, was the main character, and uh, I liked him the best. There was another character called Raggedy. I'm as happy as can be. I think we might have invented him, I'm not sure. Uh, which was always very good, but I learnt after years that some kids were frightened of, of Raggedy. Uh, I'm sure kids these days wouldn't be, but, but uh, they were then, apparently. Sometimes I'm not very friendly. We set up a company to, to do these films, and the first place we got was an artist's studio in Turnham Green. Eventually we got to another place in Bermondsey, which had been an old church. We adapted it. We had to, uh, to build a, a stage and, and then a bridge across the top so that we could work the puppets from there. And did all, uh, all the Ruperts there. We didn't have much time to shoot the episodes. They had to be done fairly quickly because of cost. We didn't shoot one episode and then go on to the next episode, so it's hard to say how long an actual episode took. But I think we did 26 in 
16 weeks. We shot the first uh, 26 episodes and we thought that was the end of it because ATV said, oh, well, we can show these to future generations. We don't have to make any more. Goodbye. <laughs> but luckily we stored all the stuff at that time because about a year afterwards they came back and said, can you make some more? They obviously sold the episodes well so that uh, we carried on and then after that there was another one and another one. <laughs> And so they said goodbye at the end of the, the 156 that we did. We did odd, odd bits of work, hoping that something else would turn up. And um, then they came back to us with a book called Here Comes Mumphy. And um, they wanted us to do a series on that. It was an elephant. All the time we'd been trying to sell them a, a, a thing of our own that we had called Clopper Castle. Uh, but uh, they weren't interested because we thought of it. <laughs> but then eventually, they, they, after that, they, I think they hadn't got anything else planned, so they let us do Clopper Castle. And so we did 52 of that. After the um, Thunderbird films and all those series, uh, and we had no work, um, we took a, a studio in Warder Street, which was actually above a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> it was the wrong end of Warder Street. <laughs> and um, we tr tried to get some commercials and, and things like that. Um, we did a few things. Uh, John had set up a, a, a rostrum camera, which is where you've got the, a flat base and, and the camera is up the top, taking what you're doing on the, on the base. Uh, we got a few jobs like that. <laughs> Actually, one of them w was called, uh, it was for a, a magazine called Cinema X, and it was a sort of pornographic, <laughs> uh, what, what was thought pornographic in those days, in the early 1970s. Um, all it was was taking pictures out of the magazine, and uh, that went on to, to this, the cinema screens, and it was the first rated advert for. Uh, 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 first X-rated advert, apparently. <laughs> cinema X, your monthly magazine guide to the adult cinema. Oh, raggedy, don't! We always enjoyed making the films um, and just hoped it would, would carry on. Raggedy, raggedy, don't worry, I'll get you down. I don't want to come down, I like it up here. But raggedy, you can't stay up here. I'm very glad that it has come back. Uh, I never thought it would because there's such a, a gap and we thought it was uh, that most of it had been lost. But it's all been found now and, and brought back and it, it's nice to see it again. Um, uh, except that I can see all the mistakes in it now. But <laughs> uh, it's not too bad, I think. He's done, and he's gonna share them all with you, so come along.